Topic, oh yeah, that was like a... <laughs> Our last topic on circuits is RC circuits. And basically, RC circuits are kind of looking back at capacitors just a little bit more closely. All right, if you remember, we talked about capacitors. We charged up capacitors, we discharged them. We talked about it in a very kind of hand-wavy way. And we had, uh, you know, wires and stuff. Now, wire is really just a resistor. And so now we're going to look at this a little bit more scientifically. So here's a circuit that would be charging up a capacitor. So here's my resistor, here's my capacitor, and here's my battery. And so this would be that circuit we described, you know, I think it was in lecture 13, uh, about how to go through and uh, uh, charge up a resistor. And that's really all we're doing now. We're just trying to be a little more mathematical about it. And so here, so I'll call my current to be going this way. And so if I do my signage like we normally do, right, so I'll get this here. Now as I'm charging up the capacitor, if you remember, this side will get positive and that side will get negative, right? If you remember, like sort of what, what happens here is, uh, you know, the, the electrons sort of leave this side to come over here where the positive is. And then what that does is it then attracts, um, or electrons will then be attracted over to here. And so that's the signage of this thing here. And so your book goes through and does this. And basically what we can do right now then is just write an equation using a Kirchhoff's loop. Now this is one loop. It's, you know, so it's a little bit easier than what we were just doing. But of course it's a little bit tricky. Now if you remember, so the voltage across the resistor is IR. Anybody remember how we would express the voltage across a capacitor? Q over C, exactly. And so if I do this, let's just start here. Okay, I'll call this my point A and go clockwise. And so I'll get negative V. That's the first sign I come to. And then here, positive IR. And then over here, positive what we just said, Q over C. And I come back down and get to here. And that's my equation equals to zero, okay? And so this is uh, here, I'll write it out again. Uh, when the book writes it out, they typically will write it out in this fashion. It's the same equation we just developed. It's just multiplied by a negative one, all right? And so this is the equation that actually describes charging up the capacitor, which we just did over here, right? And so it's just, again, being a little bit more mathematical and scientific about this. Now, what we can do is kind of think about this a little bit, and we can solve here for the I. Okay, we can look at this here. So if I'm charging up the capacitor, uh, what is that Q on the capacitor? What's that going to be when I start? Can anyone tell me? It'll be zero, right? So initially, if we look at this, at time zero, right, what happens is um, this equation that I just wrote will look something like this. It'll be I is equal to V over R, which is just Ohm's law. And so our rule, like part of the stuff that we're going to do with this equation is try to interpret how these RC circuits work. And so according to this equation, when I first start, it's like the capacitor isn't really even there. Okay, and so if you think about it, it's just like the capacitor is a wire. And so we can ignore it. So you get these questions that are like, what's the current at time zero? Well, in this case, the current at time zero, you just forget about the capacitor, erase it, put a wire there, and then think about the, the, the rest of the circuit like you would have last week or, or yesterday or whenever it was, right? And so since I is equal to VR, it's just like the capacitor is not even there. And then what happens is after a long time, okay, it blocks this out. So once uh, the Q over here gets to be the Q maximum, this current turns into zero, right? Because when you're in V maximum, right, V uh, is equal to Q max over C. That's the whole idea. When you charge up the capacitor, it becomes the same electric potential as your battery. And so those are equal, so your equation goes to zero. And so when you get these kind of equations, you basically are going to use your knowledge of circuits that we've been doing. But the way you interpret it is if it's really right after you've closed some switch, OK, you pretend the resistor is just a wire. If it's a long time, you pretend the resistor is blocking the current. And so it's kind of like you, you I'm sorry, the capacitors. Be real careful. Um, when you do this, at time zero, you treat the capacitor like a wire. Excuse me, at long time later, you pretend it's like a broken piece of the circuit. So like it's basically there's a, there's a switch that opened at that capacitor. So there is nothing there. And so let's just see how well we do with sort of uh, thinking about uh, this sort of thing here. 
And so let's do an example. So here's the kind of example we might do. So in this circuit, the switch has been open for a long time so that the capacitor uh, is uncharged. Okay, so we have this new circuit. Uh, what I want to do is, what is the current through the battery immediately after the switch is closed? So the Q on the capacitor is zero. I close the switch. What is going to be the current immediately after the switch is closed? So think about this and talk to your neighbors and we'll talk about it. Okay, so definitely some controversy here, so let's talk about this one and see if it can make sense to us. Um, and so if you look at what the majority opinion was, uh, the majority opinion was C, but there's definitely a lot of people who are thinking B. So let me give you five seconds, so make sure you put something in, and we'll go ahead and call time here. Um, and I do agree with the majority. So, so what are we doing here? Who wants to talk about this uh, and sort of say what they were thinking? Anybody want to tell us what they were thinking on this one? This was a little more, yeah. It's a great way to think about it. That's great. Anybody else have a different way they thought about it? There's, you know, always with circuits, there's always different ways to think about it. I, I love that explanation. That's a great way uh, to explain it. Like, like what I would say, so again, when the circuit is just closed, we basically just cross this guy out and imagine that there's like, you know, sort of a wire connecting these two points. And so it's like the capacitor is not even there. And so if I was to then, what I would do is I would probably think about it like a circuit. Uh, and so I would say, here, here's my battery. And so there's resistor one, and there's resistor two. And so you literally just have a situation you know, where there's one a voltage and two resistors. If I combine these right, into an equivalent resistance, right, well, I get exactly as she was describing, R divided by two. Right? This is a good thing to know, is that if you have the two identical resistors in parallel like this, okay, then to get the R equivalent, you just get you know, 2 over R if you add that up. And so it's sort of a handy thing. So you, you know, I would probably put it on my equation sheet. When you happen to have two resistors that are in parallel, the equivalent resistance is R divided by 2. So then again, this is the simplest circuit in the world. And so the, the current in the simplest circuit in the world is just V divided by R divided by 2, which is 2V over R. OK? Questions on how I did that? <coughs> Yeah, question up here. So, so I'm sorry. So, so repeat the question again. I couldn't quite hear. Like, so, so the capacitor charge is like the way we were talking about, right? So basically, you know, it sort of attracts an electron over, so, so it sort of works the same way we talked about it two days ago, right? But what happens is, is basically, initially, when there's no, like what, what, what the capacitor kind of does right, in our pictures is the capacitor makes itself a little battery where the voltage is sort of exactly kind of going against the voltage of our battery that's there, all right? So at time zero, it hasn't had time to charge up, and so it's not working against that battery, so you can essentially just erase it and think about it as being like a wire. Later on, you know, as it gets, it gets you know, at the end when it's really full up, it basically gets fulled up and it's going exactly against that battery and kills all the current in that particular part, or you know, okay, whatever it might be. Okay, that's a good question. Okay, so now let's think about the other case. Okay, so what happens then at some long time afterwards? So what is the current through the battery after the switch has been closed? for a long time. 
So we just did the sort of initial, what happens when it's been uh, switched over for a very long time. Okay, so let's go ahead and call time. If you haven't put something in, go ahead and just put an answer in now. Again, we're not graded on for correct or not. We're just graded on. All right, and this is a controversial one. This is almost like 50-50. Um, so who wants to be brave and tell us what they were thinking? Yeah. Okay, so we're saying that. Does anybody want to defend the current being zero? I mean, half of us had that. Does anybody want to say what they were thinking? Okay, so, so, so the, the key here is, is we're not asking about the current through any of the resistors in particular. We're asking for the current that's going through um, the battery. And so, yeah, so what happens here is the capacitor now acts like a break in the circuit. So it's kind of like there's sort of two ends that just aren't connected. So like uh, we were saying there, this whole part of the circuit is now ignored, but you still have the other part, okay? And so you've got to think uh, about what's going on with the other part. And so if you get rid of that middle part, you have this setup kind of looking like this here. So here's V and here's R. Uh, and so now, again, this is the simplest circuit in the world, and so the current in this case would just be V divided by R, and that's the current going through the battery. So the current going through that middle part is zero, but the question was asking about the current that's being delivered by the battery, okay? And so it, it basically, if you remember these two rules, then you can interpret at least the short-term and the long-term behavior of most RC circuits. So questions on this? Anybody? Because there was half of us who thought, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the resistor over there? Yeah, so, so what, what's happening here is, is we have these two paths in parallel, right? And so that capacitor is basically stopping any current from going through that one path, but there's still the other path all the way around for the current to go through. Right, and so there's still like because remember when we have parallel, there's like more that there's in, in general the definition of parallel is there's sort of two paths for it to go through. So a capacitor is stopping the current from going through that middle part, but there's still a path. There's still a continuous path all the way around for the current to go through. Right, and so even though you can't go this way, once I close this switch, there's a total path for the current to come through over here. So the the capacitor basically acts like a break in the wire here but that doesn't affect the outside part of the loop. Other questions on that? All right, so mathematically, this becomes the equation for the, uh, uh, for the thing we had way over here. So we should go back and just show. So for this, this um, so the more basic charging up the capacitor, we have a, a circuit like this here, okay, you can write out that equation, uh, it comes out to be this right here. And so what happens is, is our equation comes out to be what we call a, a differential equation, okay? And so if we go back um, to here, so, so for a person in physics like me, differential equations are really cool, right? Differential equations are, uh, you know, people will say are like the operating system of the universe. They are the things that govern how things work. Does anybody know what differential equation did you use in 2A like all the time? And maybe didn't know it was a differential equation. Anyone know? So F equals MA, is that what we were going to say? 
F equals MA. So, so what is a differential equation? A differential equation is an equation that's got, um, uh, you know, basically uh, derivatives and stuff describing how things work. And so uh, the acceleration, when you're in, uh, right, uh, 2A uh, is the second derivative of the position. So this is a differential equation. Now, the differential equation we just were working with is this one here, the one we just sort of worked out. Um, so we sort of described this here. Now, if you remember, the current is dq dt. And so differential equation. So if you need differential equations, you'll, you'll do a class on differential equations. And so this is a differential equation. So this is a differential equation uh, for the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. All right, and a differential equation can have different things in it. You can have the function itself, so here's the Q. You can have derivatives of that function, so here's dQ dt. And like in this case, you can even have second derivatives of the function. So when you did F equals ma, you know, like in the first couple of weeks of 2a, when you're solving for kinematics equations, you're actually using a differential equation to solve for the position uh, as a function of time. And so here, you're going to go through, and this is a differential equation to solve for the charge as a function of time. And I, I'm just not even sure how many of us have taken differential equations classes yet. Is any, a few of us? Okay, so some of us. So basically, there's a class where what you do in the class is you learn about differential equations. You also learn how to solve them, which is basically how to find uh, this thing over here. Now, for us, we won't spend too much time on that. But here's the equation that you get. So if you do differential equations, this is actually not uh, a horrible one. And so this is the function q of t. And so if you take this function q of t and then take the derivative, which is the current, the current is dq dt. Okay, so if you take that and if you, if you take that derivative, okay, I did this a little bit earlier, uh, you get uh, q max... Uh, over RC um, e to the negative t over RC. Uh, and so if you take this thing and the Q and plug them into your differential equation, they'll all add up to be zero. So that's sort of how the solution works, is you want to sort of get a function uh, that behaves with that special, in that special way. And so again, this is the equation that tells us that. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of just kind of introduce you to this if you haven't seen it before, but we won't spend too much time on this question, yeah. So anything that I didn't call a function would be constant. So like Q max is a constant, R and C are a constant, but the, the Q as a function of time is not a constant. So in this thing here, in that uh, equation or that circuit we had, the only thing that's not constant is the charge. Okay, other questions on this? Okay, and so, yeah, and so, and then what this will be, uh, this thing here, so this is the equation I just wrote in legible form. Uh, the time constant is this thing here. And so this thing, this R and this C, they tell you basically how fast this exponential does what it does. So the, if you graph this, it basically looks like this and comes up to some point constant and stops. And so this this uh, RC sort of tells you how fast that happens. So that tau RC, the time RC, is the point where you get to 63% of whatever the maximum is. And so again, this equation is where we're, we're charging up our capacitor. And so that RC gives you a sense of how long it takes to get to 63% of that total charge. Okay, so that's sort of the physical meaning of that. And so in there, the, inside that exponential, that's sort of how that uh, behaves. Um, and then if you look at after about a time of about 10 times that RC, so if you multiply R times C, the units come out to be seconds, uh, the capacitor is about 99.99% charged. So sort of 10 times that would be the full charge of our capacitor uh, for that particular case there. Um, Okay, so I think we'll stop there just because I don't want to sort of move on. So I'll be outside if you have questions, and we'll finish this up next time. So this is the end of stuff for quiz three, just so you know. Thank you.